if you love Tesla, this is going to be a tough video for you to watch. So maybe have your therapist on a speed dial. But if you love your money that you're investing into Tesla even more, I would stick around. I'm going to tell you the other side of Tesla. We're going to talk about its profits, sales, battery and self-driving tech, the competition, the product itself, and its supercharging network. And I almost guarantee you, you will be surprised a few times throughout this whole video. And that's the point. And yes, this is going to be a one-sided video, which is normally not what I do at all. As a matter of fact, most of you probably watch me because I present both sides of the story, but this is an exception. The first side of the story, how awesome Tesla is, which it is, has been pretty much oversaturating social media for years. Unfortunately, those bloggers and YouTubers that you've been getting information from have publicly admitted that they are financially invested into Tesla stock or are afraid of losing their free roasters that Tesla promised them like they did with Rich Rebuilds. Fortunately, I don't have either one of those problems, so I am able to speak to you freely. And by the way, I'm not discouraging you from investing into Tesla. I really don't care how you spend your money, but it is my job to give you the full picture, and that's what this video is about. E Electric. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here, all you have to do is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's be very clear. Tesla has been one of the biggest success stories of the last decade, and not just in the auto industry, but also in tech and green energy, and its stock has skyrocketed over the last few years. I've only seen one chart to go up like the Tesla stock price has, and that's the sales of the hand sanitizers. That made Tesla by far the most valued automaker in the world, and it made Elon Musk the richest man on Earth and Mars. But things are changing fast and in no way in favor of Tesla's reign over the industry because Tesla is not perfect. And some of its shortcomings that have gone uncontested or unnoticed for years are starting to catch up to them. Let's talk about the competition. Now, a couple of years ago, if you wanted to buy an electric car, Tesla was your only option, only good one at least. But last year, things started to change. And this year, the competition is going to get real, which will make it much harder for Tesla to keep its crown. The current competition is already beating Tesla in Europe. Audi e-tron is outselling Model X. Model 3 is being outsold by Renault Zoe and now Volkswagen ID3. And globally, Porsche Taycan has outsold Model S by almost double in Q4. This year, things are going to get way more competitive. Most new EVs will have a range of over 200 miles and in some cases over 300 miles. Many will have much cheaper price tag than any Tesla and the alternative fast charging networks have together outgrown the Tesla superchargers. I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video. The Volkswagen ID4 and Ford Mustang Mach-E will be Tesla's biggest competitors to Model Y and Model 3. Lucid Air and Porsche Taycan will steal tons of Model S buyers and Audi e-tron now in Sportback version will continue competing with the Model X despite the refresh. Rivian and Lordstown Motors will have a pickup truck on the market way ahead of Tesla Cybertruck and will probably offer a more appealing product for the general public. Nissan, Polestar, Volvo and many others will also offer great products at a competitive price. The competition is here. Now let's talk about the battery tech where Tesla seems to be an untouchable leader in the industry. Or is it? Before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Bosley. Bosley offers the only permanent solution to your hair loss and there is more than one option. Many actually. I know because I'm one of the customers. Check them out and get the free information kit with everything you need to know about your options. Get a discount gift card by going to bosley.com e or use the link in the description of this video. And by new charge, avoid wrangling with your landlord about the electrical upgrades for your electric car charging. Just plug in your new charge smart splitter at your current rental and take it with you when you move. It's as easy as that. Use the link and the discount code in the description of this video. Tesla has always had the best battery tech in the industry and now they have made yet another leap forward at their battery day. But what does the battery tech really mean to us, the consumers? Well, really three things. One is the range of the electric vehicle, two, how fast it can be charged, and three, how cheap it can be made. 
So let's examine all three and see if Tesla is still ahead. Tesla has been the undisputed king of the electric car range and it still is, but others are catching up. Lucid Motors here in the United States and Xpeng Motors in China are getting awfully close, but this race has the finish line. See, it is very unlikely that the electric car owners who mainly recharge their cars at home overnight will need a range over say 500 miles and sooner or later all of the car makers will cross that line tesla will probably be the first one but many will follow soon and then the electric car range will be a moot point in electric cars just like it is in gas cars and then nobody gets the crown two how fast can you charge that battery and that's where tesla is already starting to lose to porsche with the taycan's max charging rate set at 270 kilowatts and the upcoming Lucid Air promising a whopping 350. Three, how cheap you can make those batteries. And after the battery day, there is absolutely no doubt that Tesla is still by far the leader in that market. But the thing is, Tesla has to make cheaper batteries because their profit margins are really thin. And I will address that later in the video. I should also mention that other automakers like Volkswagen Group, Daimler, GM, and many others have invested tons of money billions and billions of dollars into their own battery factories and battery contracts and sooner or later they will catch up let's talk about the tesla supercharging network and this is where i find that tesla owners and fans are kind of behind on what they know now because for many years tesla supercharging network had absolutely no competition as a matter of fact that was probably the biggest value that Tesla owners were getting out of their cars. But things have changed drastically in the last couple of years with Electrify America now with over 500 fast charging locations with the top speed of 350 kilowatts, which is 100 kilowatts more than the fastest Tesla V3 supercharger. And if you add the 800 EV Go locations here in the United States, you will have a total of 1300 of non-Tesla fast charging locations in America compared to about 1000 locations of Tesla superchargers though I should mention that Teslas can charge at the non-Tesla fast charging stations but not the other way around. Same is true for Europe and China. In Europe there is Ionity, Fastnet and a few other fast charging networks with a maximum charge rate of 350 kilowatts and in china in addition to the fast charging networks there is an up-and-coming brand neo that has the fastest way to charge your car which is essentially to swap the battery which can be done in just a few minutes a technology that tesla has abandoned a few years ago neo has now over 150 of battery swap stations in china and growing now let's talk about the sales and the best clue to how many factories tesla is trying to build and how many cars they're planning to sell in the next few years comes from their 2020 q4 report which you can see tesla is planning on increasing their deliveries year over year by about 50 percent which means by the year of 2026 they're still going to be making less than 4 million cars a year which is still less that honda ford Hyundai, GM, Toyota, and Volkswagen are making right now. Now let's talk about profits. And I use that term pretty loosely when it comes to Tesla because last year, if it wasn't for $1.58 billion in green credit revenues, which has nothing to do with Tesla's ability to make cars and everything to do with government regulations, if it wasn't for that, Tesla would have lost more than half a billion dollars in 2020. Now, don't get me wrong, the green credits is a fair game. That's how it is. But at some point, the other automakers will figure out how to make electric cars so they won't have to buy these credits from Tesla and those revenues will disappear. The profits that Tesla did show last year of about $720 million was still only about 2% of their total of revenues of $32 billion. And healthy automakers make billions and billions of dollars in profits every year and still they're not worth anywhere close to what Tesla is worth right now. If you look at Tesla's 2020 Q4 report, you will probably notice that the profit margins have been falling quarter over quarter and I really won't be surprised if that will continue because Tesla will have to cut down on their pricing to compete with the new upcoming models that are now going to be saturating the electric car market. It already had to do so in Europe where Tesla models are being outsold by Audi, Renault and now Volkswagen in their respective categories and the competition will only get tougher now i do want to mention that tesla is not the only company that's building 
factories because I've heard that many times all of the automakers are always building and retooling factories and investing into R&D and many other ways. So everyone's got expenses. Now, let's talk about the big one. And of course, I am talking about the Tesla's self-driving technology, which has been widely accepted to be by far the best self-driving technology on the market, which is true, but only because Tesla is the only automaker that's willing to conduct human trials with their software. That's right, Tesla is the only automaker that had balls to release the unfinished software for the self-driving feature and they're pretty open about it that's what beta in its name stands for any of you who has it know exactly what i'm talking about yes tesla does not vet their software much for example a couple of months ago they released an update that made the font that appears at the bottom of instrumental panel display so small and so many people complained that they had to re-release that to make the font bigger again now this could have been avoided if they would have tested even on a small number of customers but they didn't so if they are not bothering to test something as small as the font size pun intended what else they are not bothering to test when it comes to the full self-driving package but let's talk about the competition in this sector because everybody pretends like no one else is working on this but i think a lot of you forget that original version one of the autopilot was not created by Tesla, it was created by Mobileye, a company that is now owned by Intel. Now, reportedly, Tesla got rid of Mobileye because they were not willing to experiment on humans and Tesla really wanted to push it. Now, don't forget that also it took Tesla four years to catch up to the same features once they started working on their own autopilot, which means that Mobileye technically should be four years ahead of Tesla because they weren't waiting for them. They were working on their own version and that software is being bought by other auto manufacturers except for you wouldn't see what they have now because they're not willing to put out the software that's beta. And there are other companies besides Tesla and Mobileye that are working on self-driving technologies, including Waymo. Now, the thing about almost all of them is that they are using LiDARs, a technology that Elon Musk turned down. But... You don't have to be a genius to know that it will not only not hurt the self-driving technology if you add an extra 3D high definition layer, which LiDAR brings, it will probably help. And Tesla is lacking it. And don't forget that Tesla has been failing to deliver on a full self-driving timeline that they have set for themselves. And now they had to settle a lawsuit here in the United States and they got slapped with some regulations in Europe for misleading customers with this feature. But the worst of all, and this is something that people are not talking about, though I think they should, Elon Musk himself has admitted that a couple of years ago, Tesla had to rewrite their core part of the self-driving software. And what does it tell you? It tells you that they, all this time, when they were telling you that they were developing this best self-driving software in the world, they really weren't. Apparently, they ran into a wall where they now have to rewrite it. Except for now, they're doing it, and this is very important, without their top autopilot talent who have recently quit. So after all these years, if they didn't like the mobile eye technology and they didn't like their own technology, what makes you think that what they're working on right now with less talent is actually going to work? Really, maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comment section. But if you ask me, once others release their more reliable versions that were done within the virtual simulators rather than by using the small number of drivers that's in their fleet, Tesla will no longer be on top. Now, I know we haven't really talked about something that's kind of important to this whole topic, which is the product itself. And let's start with the build quality. Now, as I was writing the script for this video, Sandy Munro has released his interview with Elon Musk, where he, you know, and I give him full credit for asking tough questions, unlike many others who have interviewed Elon, he asked, how is that that his Model 3 that he literally just bought in this year has all these panel gaps and issues where his friend's car that was made within one month of Sandy's has no issues at all. Now, Elon didn't really answer that question because the real answer is that they still don't know how to make 
good quality cars. Now, another thing that Elon has mentioned that I wouldn't have if I was him, but he mentioned that Tesla is only now learning that they're not giving enough time for the paint to dry, thus causing all these paint issues that Tesla buyers have been experiencing for years. What? I, I, okay, all right. Be, before I blow a, a blood vessel somewhere in my brain, here's the thing. Quality matters when it comes to pretty much all products. And if Tesla doesn't get their stuff together and start producing better quality cars, they will start losing to other manufacturers that are catching up. But the build quality is not Tesla's only problem. The other problem is Tesla cars are missing a lot of features that buyers expect from their cars in 2021. From anything small like integrating Apple Play and Android Auto, or side mirror blind spot indicators, or instrumental control display, to something more advanced like head-up display, or night vision mode, or side mirror cameras in Europe, or backseat headrest displays, and many others. Those are much more important to everyday consumers than having a fart app or playing a game that they can actually play on their phone. Lack of those features will turn people away from Tesla once there is competition. Now, before we get to the last topic, which is essentially the reason why I stopped buying Teslas, and I think a lot of people will follow soon, let's talk about this notion that Tesla is more than a car company, it's an energy company. Now, that's technically true, and Tesla has some amazing energy products, but however, they haven't done very well with it. They have lost market share to their competitors. A lot of them are startup companies. They have mismanaged their New York Gigafactory, which reportedly would be selling parts to Tesla's competitors to stay afloat. And Tesla's solar roof has had multiple delays and issues with installation. If Tesla was to be given credit for being an energy company, they would have to act like one. And now let me talk about the problem that is not just responsible for driving me away. I'm, I'm just one guy. Uh, I think this problem will drive a lot of people away over time because no company can do well without good customer service. And Tesla has not been very good with it. And remember, I was the original Tesla fanboy. I was one of the first 3,000 Tesla Model S owners back in 2012 when buying and owning a Tesla was not cool. Everybody thought we were stupid. So it took them a while. As a matter of fact, I bought my second and third Tesla. So it took them a while to get rid of me. But the reason for that was not the car. It was the customer service. Now, if it was just me, that would be one thing. But the thing is, is I run one of the largest Tesla Model S owners group on Facebook. And I get to see every single message that gets posted there. And I got to tell you, things have not changed. People complain about customer service all the time and even some of the biggest tesla youtubers the biggest fans have started releasing videos complaining about just that from refusing to address the center display issue that's been there for many years and now being forced into recalling almost 150,000 of those cars to the way they've dealt with people ordering the model s and now having to pay extra ten thousand dollars because it's been refreshed with no warning. But the biggest problem is that everything that Tesla does nowadays is to please its stock rather than to please its customers. And at some point, the balance between the people who are willing to put up with that stuff to get the car that they want and people like me who are not willing to put up with that stuff and would rather buy a different electric car will shift and Tesla will start losing business. Now, everything that I told you in this video is very unfortunate because if it wasn't for Tesla, we wouldn't see all these amazing electric cars coming to the market. Hell, I wouldn't have this job that I love and you wouldn't be watching this YouTube channel. And the other unfortunate thing is that most of these things are easily correctable if Elon Musk really wanted them to change. Now, I hope you get the full picture and I hope this helps you. Now, if you're wondering what to watch next and you also want to find out about all these amazing electric cars I've been talking about that are coming on the market this year, I put a video together with all of them and you can find the link in the description of this video. Other than that, I am looking forward to all of your comments. I will see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.